Hello everybody, it's the Game Judge here, and we recently witnessed the Nintendo Direct of 2024. And after watching this spectacle, I want to share with you guys my top three games I'm most excited for. Without further ado, let's hop in, shall we? The first game I want to talk about is Grounded. Now, yes, it was released back in 2022. It was thought to be an Xbox exclusive. What's interesting is just prior to this, Phil Spencer did a sit-down talk with the Xbox podcast to clear up rumors of Xbox not making consoles anymore or that Xbox was getting rid of exclusives. So we made the decision that we're going to take four games to the other consoles, um, just four games, not a change to our kind of fundamental exclusive strategy. Up to this point, Phil Spencer had only mentioned four games that would not be exclusive anymore to Xbox. So we really didn't know which four games Phil was talking about. That was until Grounded was announced at the Nintendo Direct. And then we actually learned shortly after what the other three games are going to be on an Xbox Wire post. Now I have to admit that when I first saw info on Grounded from watching the Xbox showcase a few years back, I wasn't too excited. For me, the fact that it was from Obsidian Entertainment and knowing the games that they typically make, as a fan, I was not not too excited to be honest. The whimsical PG-13 nature of Grounded just wasn't for me. However, however, at the time it never entered my mind that Grounded would be released on Nintendo Switch. Because after all, it was shown at the Xbox showcase and in my mind it was an exclusive title. So I pictured just playing on the Xbox. I think this changed the way that I looked at Grounded. So maybe it was the break between the last time I saw anything on Grounded, or maybe it was the fact that it is now on the Nintendo Switch, or maybe even a combination of these things. Nonetheless, I have to admit it is a game I'm looking forward to and having it on the Nintendo Switch makes total sense. The art style and gameplay, or a PG-13 nature rather, to me fits perfectly on the Nintendo Switch. In fact, I would argue it makes more sense to be on the Nintendo Switch with the type of games you usually expect to play on the Nintendo Switch. It is slated for the port on April 16th, 2024. I think this is a good move for Xbox and a good move for Nintendo. Next up at number two, we have Unicorn Overlord. It is being developed by the renowned Vanillaware, who have a reputation for developing games in the 2D space, and were really put on the map with games like Odin Spear, which was released back in 2007. It reminds me so much of the classic real-time strategy fantasy games of the past, and I'm here for it. In fact, it kind of reminds me of Fire Emblem, a game I've enjoyed very much. Even the storyline seems kind of similar in the sense you have these different nations that you're partnering with to save the world. It does make me wonder if you will have to perhaps pick one of these nations to side with, kind of like you did in Fire Emblem. It even appears that you will have a lot of characters to choose from, and can maybe only choose a select few to take actions or to even be in your party. I love the art style, the classic turn-based combat, and RPG elements where you're customizing your characters. If we take a look here, you can kind of see here a lot of the stuff I was talking about. Now I clipped this from the video. You can see here, it looks like you have different characters and they have different like armor and weapons and things like that. But then if you also look, you can see things like stamina, mobility, hit points, level, physical attack, physical defense. This just tells me that this has a lot of those like RPG elements that you like in these types of video games. So it's pretty cool to see that. And finally, we have number three, and that is drum roll, please. Pentiment. One of the four horsemen of the non-exclusive Xbox games. That felt kind of weird to say. In all seriousness, I kind of feel the same way about this game as I do Grounded. Except it looks more like a game Obsidian would make to me. I mean, when I look at this game, it screams Nintendo Switch, not Xbox. I mean, just look at it. Would you just look at it? Oh, would you look at that? Oh, would you look at that? Now, now, I know I said top three, but I just can't help myself. And have to mention two other honorable mentions. Please forgive me. I just needed to get this off my chest. And the first one to be honorably mentioned is South Park Snow Day. And you guys have to admit, based off the gameplay, I cannot stop thinking about the old Nintendo 64 South Park game where you pee on a snowball and throw it at chickens or people. Which brings me to the point that it is more like the old Nintendo 64 South Park game. It seems like a departure from more recent South Park games like Stick of Truth, where the combat is turn-based. Also, there's a difference of viewpoints of your character, but nonetheless, I see similarities here, such as the RPG elements, and the game looks interesting to me. Something else to note here is South Park Stick of Truth was developed by Obsidian Entertainment, and this game is being developed by a smaller studio called Question, who is known for developing the Magic Circle, and includes former developers from Dishonored and Bioshock and Stefan Alexander, Kane Shin, and Jordan Thomas. And for the last honorable mention, we had the classic Nintendo 64 game, or release rather, on the Nintendo Switch of Killer Instinct. And I'll be honest here, this might just be a little nostalgia biased, as I definitely have fond memories of playing this on the Nintendo 64 as a kid, in my bedroom, along with games such as Earthworm Jim. Or Mario 64. It's me, 
Mario. Hello. But my god, it unlocked a memory in my mind with that music. I forgot how badass it was. So overall, I thought the Nintendo Direct wasn't the worst thing in the world, but it also wasn't the best thing. It seemed like a lot of ports, which to be fair, made a lot of sense to me when I saw the games they mentioned. And a lot of the games, to be honest, didn't get me too excited. Maybe some of them just weren't my cup of tea. I'm not saying they're bad games. However, the top games I mentioned in this video did give me some excitement. What was your guys' favorite games from Nintendo Direct, if any? Do you think it was a good showcase or a bad one? I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you on the next one.